When you hear the word cowboy, what do you think of? John Wayne or Roy Rogers? The internationally acclaimed football players of the Dallas Cowboys? A crowded bar of a honky-tonk? Today we are exploring cowboy culture, where it's been and where it is today. Meet you at the table. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. Welcome back, y'all. We're here at the table. Yep. Go figure. And speaking of tables, I'll go ahead and thank our wonderful sponsor for this episode. Big thank you to Tennessee Woodworks, the handcrafter of custom farmhouse style furniture. Now, we've mentioned them another time on this podcast before, and we were talking about some of the unique furniture selections that they offer for every room. Every room of your home. So... Today, I wanted to just specifically mention that they have butcher block cutting boards that are made with beautiful hard maple and walnut that's sourced locally right here in Nashville, where we are. So cool. It's a great addition to your kitchen for everyday use. I will say I received a butcher block cutting board as a wedding gift, and it was a very big treat for my kitchen. I that was is a fabulous wedding gift. As a new bride. That's and a so fabulous wedding gift. Whether you've seen somebody register for one of those or not, that is a fabulous wedding gift. and Or any sort of yeah, large occasion, birth, yes. or maybe a milestone birthday, or if you're just wanting to really bless somebody. So I would encourage you guys uh, to check those out. We just got, every kitchen needs one. We got to touch and feel it, and it just felt so smooth. It had that sealant on it that yeah, was just that so good for good. the wood. Yeah, and I love how he does like a is it branded with his oh, yeah. Tennessee Woodworks on the bottom. It looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to check them out, you can find them at TennesseeWoodworks.com. And if you are in the Nashville area. You can even schedule a free in-home consultation with them, and they'll come check out what your needs are in your home. Do all the measurements and all that jazz. Yes. Okay, we are talking about cowboy culture today. We got fresh on our minds. We got schooled (laughs) because we've been in Texas, y'all. So, I mean, I want to give just like a very, very little background. How did cows get in Texas? Oh, I want. Can I start like way back? Yeah. So this is going to be super brief, but the Spaniards brought cows to Mexico in the early 1500s. Okay. And they grew like majorly repopulated. And yeah, cat- leave them alone and they will yeah, repopulate. They did what they were made to do, right? <laughs> and so cattle drives started in the mid 1800s where cattle was being driven all around to places where it was needed they were just naturally you know migrating to different areas and thus the cowboy was born somebody's got to move them where you need them yeah and so i think you can really just describe the most basic of terms as a cowboy or a cowgirl as one who herds cattle from a horse yeah I mean, that's really kind of, yeah. you know, there's rodeos and there's sort of, sort of more expansive tricks and trades and things that, you know, would maybe more include ranchers and a broader sort of view of it. But at the most simple of it, it's that's just true. moving cattle from a horse. Well, <laughs> and that's, an, I mean, it's athletic. For sure. Real, you know, I for was, sure. I was really just amazed at how schooled we got when we made our trip to Texas, too. But, um. I was also so pleasantly surprised to see how diverse cowboys are, were and are. True. I guess when you think about some of the famous ones from the movies. That's what it is. It's the movies that made us skewed, right? Skewed with the, like the white guy. Uh-huh. But a lot of them were, you know, Hispanic and black. And yep. so very yeah. diverse group yeah. of people yeah. were Just- cowboys. And cowgirls. And cowgirls. I want to talk a little bit more about that later. This is funny, though. 
did you know that, I mean, we're obviously focused on Southern culture. So we're talking about cowboys of the Southeast or Southwest United States. But in Britain, they refer to a cowboy as somebody who's reckless or careless. Okay. Especially when driving an automobile. Oh, that's funny. So we're not talking about just reckless people today. No. I knew y'all knew that, but I just well, did, the, I didn't. Well, the British, you know, they have their own way of, you know, riding a horse. It's all together it's all different, different. For sure. But I just think that's so funny that we speak the same language, but yet <laughs> across the pond, there are some differences. In so many. Sort of our urban or slang vocabulary. So. so. Well, where shall we start? Well, I guess one of the broad statements that I felt like I needed to make was just that cowboy culture comes from a lifestyle of ranch living and working. Yeah. And they are workers. Workers. Yeah. Yeah. Like real hard workers up before the sun. Yeah. Using every muscle and part of their body to labor. (laughs) Yeah. That's right. And I feel like it, you know, cowboy culture is, we could... It just touches everything. It touches their fashion. It touches their mm-hmm. decor in their homes. Their lingo. Yeah. The way they cook food. It's like so many different things that it touches. Yeah. So this is just a little broad scope. Yeah. Touch of that. And then like when you think of lifestyle, back to your mention of movies, there's some stereotypes that were really branded in to the minds of us Americans of what that lifestyle is as a cowboy, which would be like heavy drinking, gambling, quick to fight, staying single. That's like so true. Just, like you're as you're saying that, I'm like, yes, and I didn't even think about that even when we were down there. But yeah. Like kind of a renegade that like you probably like the boy in high school that your parents hope that you don't have a crush on. Right. You know, right? Like <laughs> That's kind of how a cowboy was painted, I feel like, in the movies. But that's just a stereotype that happens with Hollywood films. So should we talk about, like, the some of the vocabulary? Or, sure. Um, there's and even there's a lot of it. Well, and there's even... I'll start with maybe uh, the actual cattle drive, because that, that's what we said, is this is movement of cattle <laughs> by on horseback. But there is like an actual formation that men and women on horseback put the herd in. And I didn't know like any of these words. Okay, so this is funny. Before you even get into it, I have already since our trip to Texas been noticing words that I saw there. Like I saw a car and it had um, laureate on it, which is a horse word. Okay. But just some different. Yeah, you know, I was thinking, it seems like there's a lot in cars, Bronco and Wrangler. I was going to say, Wrangler's the only (laughs) one on this list of the cattle drive positions that I've ever heard. So, well, the first up is the trail boss. They are right up in the front. They are the ones that determined the route and they keep an eye out for trouble ahead. So they're the trail boss. All right. Pretty straightforward. There is a point that is up at the front, but it's on both sides. They guided the cattle in the right direction. There's a swing, which is in the middle, but again on both sides. And they assist the points that are right in front of them. The flank, which is really towards more of the back. And they kept the middle intact. So it's kind of like just keep making sure the people Your in front of you are doing what they're the right supposed way. to do. There's a drag in the back. They help push the slower cattle. Give them a little scooch, scooch. Okay. <laughs> And the, I think you say it, Remuda is in the back, and it's a whole set of horses that are a replacement set of the horses for the drovers. So they're just kind of like there on as needed. Okay. If needed. And then the Wrangler is at the very back of the herd, and they just kind of oversee those the Remuda the um, replacement set of horses well, so okay. those were just, that's kind of the formation of how they keep the herd intact when they're traveling and moving them around and I thought that was kind of interesting that's all very those different interesting vocab words well I found a, some vocab words too um, you mentioned drover did you say what his role is no what's okay the, well that's me. just one who drives cattle so yes. maybe all of those could be yes that's true know. that's true know. Um, but there's lots of words for di- wor- different words for different 
meanings in horses and cattle too. Mm-hmm. So like an unbroken horse is a bronc. Okay, hence the name Bronco. Or Bronco, the, I you guess. Can picture the yeah, the horse that's kind of wild. Yeah. Um it, well, and a Mustang is a wild horse, so I don't know oh, the difference true. in the two, but there's another Makes for good car, car names. Word. Yeah. Um a Maverick is a stray, an unbranded calf. Okay. And I guess, you know, they had to brand them because, well, first of all, there ha- there wasn't always barbed wire and all of that like, yeah. to keep them in pens. So when they got out, you needed to know whose was whose and all that. So yeah. that's why they did all the branding. Say the, say the definition of Maverick again real quick. A stray, unbranded calf. I just have Top Gun Maverick still <laughs> in my mind. And I'm like, he kind of was, wasn't he? He's kind of a stray, kind of... <laughs> Anyway, um, in I had mentioned a bronc, an unbroken horse. A broke is a horse that's gentle and ready to ride. So okay, that kind of makes sense. Like they're broke. Uh huh. They've for sure. broken in. Broken in. Yeah. A catch pen. That's the corral for holding the cattle or horses. Okay. A, I think you say it doggy, doggy, like or I've heard like get along little doggy. Oh. That's an orphaned calf. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I've got lots more, but anyway, we'll, we'll let's go keep going and maybe some of these words will come up. Well, I think we've probably said it on here before that a huge piece of culture of any culture is the music of that culture. And so I want to make sure we just at least acknowledge that country music, Western music, and all the variations and offshoots of that play a role in cowboy culture but I wanted to introduce our listeners to our new friend who is a cowgirl poet so we're going to introduce you to our friend Teresa Burleson of Fort Worth she's an award-winning poet whose poems are inspired by her personal experiences her heritage and the western way of life we met her as she was working at the stockyard museum in fort worth and she was decked out in a cowboy hat and a big belt buckle and she shared some of her poems with us and we wanted to share one with y'all because this is a very unique part of cowboy culture so this poem here is called the herd back when cowboys were prince of the prairie and longhorn cattle were king The cattle drives came through Fort Worth and it started in the spring around 1867 when there were no fences or rails. They pointed them north to Kansas, headed for the Chisholm Trail. Now many books were written and many a movie made about this time in history that was less than two decades. The drovers were all creeds and colors, cowboys and men that were tough because the longhorns were wild and woolly and life on the trail was rough. A perilous journey riding herd over 2,500 cattle. These brave young men would spend up to 100 days in the saddle. In the end, 5 million were driven up to the Kansas railhead, then put on trains and taken east so those folks could be fed. It is a proud Texas legacy of determination and grit, and the Fort Worth herd was created, immortalizing it. Each day, twice a day, people gather to see the cattle drive. It's a unique way that Fort Worth keeps our heritage alive. The only city with a longhorn herd wearing the FW brand, representing the men and cattle that trekked across this land. These drovers and horses carry the essence of those that rode before. As they herd those steers down the street, the legend lives once more. And every longhorn steer that walks the bricks of East Exchange carries the spirit of those that once trod upon the Texas range. So come on down to Cowtown and have your inner cowboy stirred. We guarantee you'll never forget once you've seen the Fort Worth herd. So I just thought it was super interesting that poetry, a format that's sometimes flowery and full of symbolism and describing love and just different scenarios that are so contrast to what I would consider ran- rough ranch life and the hardworking cowboys and cowgirls that are out there. So 
Teresa has so many good poems out there. We're going to link to her in our show notes so that you guys can listen to more. And on another note, there is a huge piece of cowboy culture that includes their faith. And I wanted to mention Ah. something that I've been learning more about, which is cowboy church. So this is not new, but I think it's new to a lot of people that maybe only have a cowboy church like, you know, far from them them, or they're just starting to hear about it. But cowboy church is a non-denominational church. Uh, They believe in the triune God. They believe that the Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit. There's not a membership um, like an affiliation like some denominations have. It's very, very laid back, like definitely no dressing up (laughs) no the dress code is come as you are yes in your wranglers and they're held these church meetings are held in non-traditional settings so like rodeos okay and you know or just some sort of that's outdoor arena that is conducive do you come on horse if you would like some people do okay so the closest if you were hope like thinking okay non-denominational i don't really i still understand the closest they would affiliate would be a traditional baptist church according to some of the stuff i was reading online okay but like the music genre for worship is typically country okay uh you know, maybe a little less sort of churchy vernacular because they are seeking to attract a, a manly man or a, an outdoorsy person, man, male or female, that's, you know, yeah, just living the ranch life. This is maybe like faith might be new to them or they're just not used to growing up in that more traditional church setting. So Texas claims the concept of cowboy churches and they say that. It originated in the 1940s when a country singer named Carl Stuart Hamblin, inspired by the famous Billy Graham, okay. gave up drinking and gambling, and he was then began hosting a radio show called Cowboy Church in the Air. So that was in the 40s. So it took several decades later for there to actually be meetings. So the radio program is what led to church meetings popping up at rodeo arenas across the country but this is hilarious you don't know this yet so the first true stationary cowboy church is reported to be billy bobs in texas which identifies itself as the world's largest honky tonk oh my gosh in fort worth and we just drove by there in fort worth texas and we looked at maybe going there but the show was ted nugent and (laughs) it was Again, non-conventional types of places <laughs> these church meetings are happening. So after uh, Jeff Copenhaver preached at the 1985 National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas, he was invited by Billy Bob to begin holding regular services in oh, the bar's nice. Fort Worth Rodeo Arena. And based on that, then other people started going, oh, so we could like actually meet and we could meet like even if we don't have a church building. And so that's how Cowboy Church and started. And appealed to all of those. Yeah. yeah that's and so interesting. The Amer- there is an American Fellowship of Cowboy Churches. Okay. They count at least 200 churches. But, I mean, I saw other estimates that were up to like 5,000 existing nationwide. So Whoa. I don't know how many like governing well, there's bodies. there's one here south of us. Yep, I think there's at least like six in Middle Tennessee. Oh my goodness. Maybe okay. only like eight or nine statewide. I mean, okay. You know, so. That's um, so wild. Yeah, I just think that's so cool, though, Very to cool. marry the lifestyle yeah. and, and faith. Bring your so. faith in. Yeah. It's very cool. Cowboy Church. I'd visit one. I'd love to I know. visit one. We, we started to be able to, but our trip to Fort Worth was one day short. So. I know. Well, I would have gone in a heartbeat. For sure. And I would have wished that I I was had... amazed how much was happening on Sunday in Fort Worth. Like, that we were leaving on Saturday, and we were invited to, like, three different things on Sunday. I know. Well, we make friends easily, too. <laughs> so people wanted us different places. Well, I love the... Um, just all of the leather that is in that world, yes. too. Like, we went in so many shops that, 
you open the door and like that leather smell just smacks you in mm-hmm. the face. And I love it so much. Like it's, you just know it's good stuff. It is. Genuine. Quality. Quality leather. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we saw lots of Native American Indian rugs and patterns in the decor. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, oh, I just love it all. Yeah. Super quality. Looks because like- it has to be because they actually use <laughs> what they're like. Their, their cowboy boots get used on horseback, not yeah. just on Broadway. Yeah, so you got to have a saddle that's like you know fits you well if you're riding it all the time it's not like this is a one hour a weekend hobby right I was even amazed by some of the price tags on saddles and I mean you kind of thousands five thousands, six seven thousand <laughs> hello you kind of have to think of it like well this is my work car this yeah. is my investment I don't have an office <laughs> this is everything this is the office. right here this is the, wow I work remotely yeah <laughs> everywhere on saddle well, there's an American Cowboy Culture Association. Oh, I th- well, that's thought cool. that was interesting. It's an organization based out of Lubbock, Texas. Seeks to promote and preserve the Western history and culture of the late 19th and early 20th century American cowboy. Well, founded in 1989. It needs more preserving. I think it needs a little even more storytelling. Like, I think we need some more. Some, I don't know how that needs to happen. I don't know if there's a movie that needs to come out mm-hmm. that's a little more up to date like kind of modernizing Mm -hmm. because it's still i mean there's still cowboys it's not like we're saying oh their story's getting lost like i would like to have people telling the story of what's happening now yeah yeah good point well i think there's even like an interesting i don't know like here in nashville it's been so commercialized like specifically downtown where our honky tonks are that it feels like the only true remaining cowboy culture and i'm talking about like in our very commercialized downtown nashville area are just hats boots nobody's even thinking about like what we're talking about the actual wear and tear and why these even were invented right it's more of just the style right like i want a cute pink cowboy hat right or like a cute um yeah to wear yeah the Tonight I'm going to the honky tonk. Well, yeah, and to instead you know. of like a long lasting hat to keep the sun yeah. off of me while I'm Yeah. Out I don't even know if many places even still have a mechanical bull to ride. I mean, that came from the rodeo culture that is, so you know, true. a sport. But I will say this just real quick, if you are looking for a good look and you're in Nashville at sort of cowboy culture, it does sometimes include dancing. Oh, yeah. And we do still have a very, very good dancing spot called the Wild Horse Saloon. It's very family friendly. Like they do line dancing early enough in the day. In the day. Yeah. That you could go there with your family. But, you know, sometimes I forget to include that country western dancing is part of this culture that's, as well. That's very true. And so, yeah. yeah. I think our downtown Nashville, like, it just gets so crazy party scene later in the I night. Know. Yeah. But, yeah, during the day, it's totally fine. Now, in all throughout Texas, they kind of are more known for um, dance halls versus yes. true honky-tonk, where it is a little bit more of a dance focus. For sure. Yeah. Um, with the ball, you know, the um, dance floor in the center. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could almost call the Wild Horse a dance hall. Yeah. Because it does it have a really substantial dance, dance floor, floor that is the focal point. Right. Besides all the horses. Yeah, it really is kind of more dance hall style. Well, now, one of the most po- important parts of a cowboy's wardrobe is this hat. True. Let's focus on the hat for a second. <laughs> a good cowboy hat. They There's a variety of different things they're made out of, even for different seasons. So... Uh, we were there in the 106 degree heat <laughs> and yeah we a were lot of them will wear straw hats when it's that hot yeah just because that breathes better and that it makes still sense. keeps the sun off 
But in the cooler weather, it's not uncommon for them to be mad at a beaver or rabbit. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. But apparently, those are pop- those are popular. Okay. Um, for hats to be made out of. Okay. A lot of times, you'll see some added personality to a hat because this is kind of like their, yeah, their, yeah. their thing, right? Yeah, you got to make it make it your own somehow. So yeah, like with little leather bands or braided leather mm-hmm. on there. Um, sometimes conchos will be on there okay that's those like silver looking yeah. circular silver exactly does it usually have turquoise in the middle sometimes okay there again doesn't have to though or it doesn't have to sometimes it's just silver um sometimes there'll be turquoise uh-huh. in those or even just Added, in the braid yeah. or different yeah. kinds of things um even feathers uh-huh you'll see feathers yep. sometimes cowgirls will sometimes have beads or bling kind of in there <laughs> particularly i think it's rodeo cowboys even have a little bit more flair and bling okay than well just they're a there for show cowboy that right? makes sense so they'll have more of the brighter colors leather chaps okay yep fringes and sequins and rhinestones for women like that kind of stuff you'll see more for a rodeo cowboy. that makes sense yes they're but, stage um, clothes <laughs> exactly uh cowboys often wear suspenders or overalls mm-hmm. okay um or sometimes just like because they got to keep their pants up because <laughs> they're working a lot True. so or just a leather belt yeah sometimes they'll just have a belt um let's talk about the belt buckle oh i'm so glad huge. you brought this up Belt buckles are sometimes really more of a trophy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yes. Like, kind of like that. Uh, they're often given in rodeos to the prize winner okay. of a rodeo. Yep. So it'll actually have like the, the event rodeo name. name and all that on there. That's so fun. Um, sometimes people give them as gifts, mm-hmm. um, you know, for some award kind of thing Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it's almost like you're kind of wearing your trophy yeah i like that there's a lot of like little sayings and things i found this really were you done with wardrobe yeah yeah. i found this really cute book called cowboy etiquette how cute and i thought some of these were right on so i'm gonna read just a few from this okay so one of them says nowadays a lot of people greet you with how are you how are you doing and that's fine. But a proper cowboy greeting comes from an awareness as to where the sun is in the sky. Oh. And it consists of one word. Morning. Afternoon. Evening. That's it. That's their greeting, right? That's has so no- cute. You probably just nod back. That's right. There is etiquette that says, always tip your hat to a lady. And they're all ladies. Aww. I thought that was cute. So sweet. Spurs on the porch are borderline. In the house, that's over the line. So clearly, <laughs> scratching things. Spurs need to stay outside. Yeah, that scratches stuff. Do we need to talk about what a spur is? Sure. Yeah. Well, that's that little dangle, like that little metal spiky yeah, wheel like, kind is of thing on the back of their uh, boot. It, is on the back of the boot so that they can prod the horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was my favorite, though. If you're on horseback talking to someone and they're on the ground, dismount. It ain't polite to talk down to people. Oh, Isn't that so fun? So cute. So, yeah. Do you know what the term cowboy up means? Is that like pony up or man up? Like pretty much grin and bear it. Uh-huh. Like okay. Like that kind of, yep. you know. Yeah. What about cowboy stretch? Do you know what a cowboy stretch is? I feel like it's what you'd probably do when you got off of a horse, but I don't know. It is a quick nap in your clothes oh. and shoes. Oh. So it's like you're just literally, it's like <laughs> you're you're not getting undressed because you might have to jump right back on your horse. No, I was imagining like inner thigh stretches because it's been <laughs> a been long ride. So long. Yeah. I'm sure they have a word for that. Too. <laughs> uh, ride the line. What's that? Checking the fence to fix any areas that are broken. Oh, you yeah. you got to ride the line to Mint make fences. sure. Mint fences. You know, cattle aren't getting out. That's all. smart. Anyway, I just like some of those little phrases. Well, we can't talk about cowboys for almost an entire episode, episode without mentioning cowgirls. Well, and there's yeah. some legitimate cowgirls that Heck are yeah. fierce. And it, they really go back to, like, 
late 1800s. So we actually did get to go visit the Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame, which is in Fort Worth. So fun. National Cowgirl Museum. Yeah. So this museum is so amazing. Like exceeded at all expectations. I mean amazing both in the content, but even probably more so what elevated it was the presentation oh, of man. the content. So high end, high tech. So Annie Oakley, which she was a famous cowgirl from like late eighteen she was born in eighteen sixty. So eighteen nineties really was when she was kinda at her height. But she in this museum like digitally appears before you as like you're looking through this like kind of black narrow I don't know how to really describe this well but you're kind of looking through this like dark hollow spot and she it's like she's being projected kind of up 3D 3D she's talking to you about like really just what it was like to be a cowgirl amongst an all male ensemble and like what they ate and what their day was like and the museum talks about you know just kind of what these cowgirls did for talents and tricks they did and just how they went on the road with the buffalo bill wild wild west show that tra- had them traveling all over the world over. you know it was just you know extremely well done they've got all these different exhibits that come through where you the one that's there now is shows a lot of the costuming like the bedazzled beautiful like as if you were talking about kind of stage clothes that cowgirls uh even modern day cowgirls like reba mcintyre and miranda lambert and some of those country singers what they wear so it's just you know you got to acknowledge that there are cowgirls out there and they work as hard and do all the tricks just as much as a lot of the men do so well there was a section that i actually just pulled this up on my phone because i thought it was so cool um this is just a picture i took in that museum it says cowgirls in the wild west carved an identity for themselves that allowed them to live in both male and female spheres they were skilled equestrians or sharpshooters traveled thousands of miles in a year were professionally paid athletes and participated in a very masculine play of the West. Mm. Yet, they also adhered to those things that made them acceptable as females. In newspaper accounts of the time, a cowgirl's ability to cook, sew, and clean were often mentioned in the same article as their skills in the arena. There was a deliberate effort made by the media and others to show that Wild West cowgirls were still ladies, as defined by their time. This duality is most easily observed in dress and manner. So it's like they had the best of both. That is so good. I'm so (laughs) glad you caught that, all the wording of that. Yeah, it was like they had the best of both. Amazing women. Yeah, they were. That's, I can't say it any better than that. So good. (laughs) Well, I would love to give away some of these cute books we picked up while we were in Fort Worth. So I've got Cowboy Etiquette and I've got How to Win a Cowboy's Heart Cookbook to give away on Instagram this week. So if you're not already, go ahead and follow us on Instagram at Steel Magnolias Podcast to enter to win those two books that are super cute. Um, can we end on with just some funny cowboy wisdom? Sure. Okay. There's a few different ones that I think are so stinking cute. Trust everyone, but always cut the cards. Nice. I like that. Don't be all hat and no cattle. I don't know what that means. That's like you're dressing the part, but you don't do oh, the... Oh, that's like everybody on Broadway right now in Nashville. <laughs> that's right. They're all hat and no cattle. Um, never squat while wearing spurs. <laughs> <laughs> And always drink upstream from the herd. Oh my gosh. That is that's wisdom. That's probably somebody that's enough. been there, done that, right? That's probably enough. There's many on here, but that's probably enough. Well, there's your taste of cowboy and cowgirls for the week. <laughs> Hope y'all have a great week. And we can't wait to bring some more. Probably got a little more Texas culture to share with y'all in the coming week. Yeah, so they have a strong culture. We could do many episodes. That's right. Well, Well, peace be with you, Laura Beth. Thanks, Lainey. And also with y'all.